Good morning, Doug. Hey, good morning, Keith. It's another wonderful day to be updating our friends on our thoughts on the world and the markets. Yeah, you have the disclaimer up. We've got a new a, a new addition to the disclaimer. Um, as you know, past performance is no indication of the future. Um, we could talk about that in different ways, but but uh, we like to take a look at the S and P five hundred index, the small cap index, the Nasdaq. We like to look at all kinds of stocks from time to time, some ETFs. These are not recommendations. These are just opinions, thoughts, and uh, a lens into what's happening into the stock market. And I want to give high fives to the investors, business daily people for creating Market Surge. They rebranded that. It used to be Market Smith, but it's a rebrand. And we use their graphs. So thank you. Did you know they rebranded the name of their newspaper too? I did not. It's called the IBD Weekly. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Huh. IBD Weekly. Yeah. Does it even make sense? Well, they don't Investors do it Investors Business Daily they Weekly. Yeah they, they, <laughs> yeah. they don't do it daily anymore. So it's, <laughs> they took the original initials and I can appreciate that because when you try to name something, it's really, really difficult. And so there you have it. Our friends at the IBD, they are cool people. Hey, this topic we're going to discover today or talk about today is an, is, is an important one right now, but it's going to become an important one in the weeks ahead, right? And so Keith and I, we want to talk right now, mid-April, about the presidential election. And uh, with the presidential election, it's just so strange to me that we have two possibilities. You know, it'd be like saying, uh, uh, "Am I gonna, am I gonna choose um, a Ford or a Chevy?" That's those are the only options I have to drive around. It's just a wild thing. So you're you're telling me that you uh, don't believe a third party's got a chance then? I really don't. I mean, maybe someday. I know that happens overseas, but but yeah, I don't I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm really curious. Uh, I, I I don't even know what goes on in politics. To be frank about it, Doug, like like how the Kennedy name got kicked out, what all that was about. But it, it just seems really interesting. Seems kind of a throwback to, I think it was the 92 election um, with President Bush and um, Bill Clinton and Ross Perot where the third party came into it. But uh, it's just a really interesting time, that's for sure. It It's a people business. I mean, it's all about connections. And when... When I elect somebody, I have no idea who's really running stuff. You know, if people believe in Keith Tyner, and Keith Tyner believes in Libby and Amanda and Phil and myself, you know, it's a big team. And so who who are these folks hiring? That that's that's probably the bigger question that I have is how do I how do I get to know the team? And does it even make any difference? <laughs> I, I was gonna say, I think in my lifetime. This seems to be the most obvious presidential um, administration that the president is not directing. It seems obvious to me. And and so I don't think anybody really knows who is making the decisions. Who's the today. team? Yeah. 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 I think it's really been very obscure for the last three years. Yeah. So we're not picking a head coach. Uh, we, we're, we're picking a, a, an organization, a group of people. And uh that's encouraging to me, and that's also very discouraging at the same time. Yeah, it seems as though uh, if you think you're hiring the coach that you probably are living in past. I don't even know if that happened in past. It's hard to know. I mean, I think a great leader has to be a great uh, delegator. And so I'm sure as far back as time we've had a, a presence here, they've been really good delegators. Here's what I know is probably half of you are going to be excited and half of you aren't on November. What what day did we decide the election? The so on the 6th, our, well, we probably won't know on the 6th. Yeah. <laughs> as crazy as that is. But but yeah, ha we'll probably, probably be half and half. Or maybe this year, I don't even know if anybody who's too passionate. I will tell you this though, Keith, I saw my first president election sign in my neighborhood today. Nice. That's some conviction there. I was going to say that happy you're going to be happy and happy or sad, but I was also going to be smart like Keith and say you guys are going to you're going to cancel out each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, it it is what it is, right? Like it's a. Um, 
it's a component of that we live in a a culture that we almost have a 50-50 uh, constituency. And many years ago in an investment thing, I heard the the speaker say that um, you will be sad to know that the person that that decides our next president <clears throat> is the person who watches championship wrestling and believes it's real. Yeah, hey, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve, it is real. In case you're watching this, buddy. <laughs> so. Well, we're in the election year, and and this it, it's interesting when we do the numbers, Keith bought me a gift a long time ago. He introduced me to the Stock Traders Almanac. I've talked about it on this show before. I really love this book. It's it's something I, I pay attention to daily and uh, has great data. This you might find interesting. This is going way back in time to 1833. And the election year, the stock market, just a bunch of stocks. Let's just call it that. Just a bunch of stocks. Uh, has had an average gain of 6% during the election year. And then the best year, you may have heard us talk about this, is the pre-election year, the, the third year of a president's election cycle. And that's a, a 10% return. So not, not too bad historically. But uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, he, he's got some, some pretty wild numbers on here, Keith. And in his post-election year of his first term, 66%. And I want to give props to my good friend, Bob, because we were talking about this a few minutes ago. He goes, yeah, 66% is not too bad of a return if you survive the 1929 crash. <laughs> Context matters. So, Bob, I just want to thank you for your observation on that. It is... Um... It's it's math. That's all it is. We know that, yeah, you you we we have um, learned the hard way that math can work against you, and and that's I think that's part of the reason that we are even as investors taking a cautious approach into the election. I think yeah, you know, we're not we're not pessimistic, optimistic. We're just realistic. Yeah, I I think I think the way I see it, Keith, is if the market's given us opportunities, let's go. But right. if, but if it's not, uh, we don't mind cash. Yeah. And so I don't know what this summer is going to bring. Typically, uh, you've heard the saying "sell in May and go away." Well, that normally starts right around now. It's scheduled for about a week out, I think. But it normally starts right around now, where the sellers go and vacation to Connecticut and, and just hang out on the beach. I don't know what they do. And then come November, uh, the market's best six months, November to April, historically. And so we're getting ready to go into that time of sell away. And you know what? It might not be a sell away market. And how will we know? Just by watching the market. Right. Right. And looking for new highs. New highs don't happen without new highs. And the same is true on the other side. New lows don't happen without new lows. So you that's why you have to just pay attention to what's going on out there. The the process of a presidential election is just a painful, brutal thing. You know, there's um it's probably more obnoxious than ever, I'd say, even right now, like the things that people say and do and um, the divisiveness. I was in a meeting yesterday with some uh, leaders of Indianapolis that are in their 40s, and then former leaders of Indianapolis that seem to be in their mid to upper 60s into their 80s. And it was a communication between those two groups of leaders and talking about what really needs to go on in the community going forward. And one of the older guys point of view was, I don't know how you younger guys are going to make progress with the um, divisiveness of the politics. And, and he, the one guy almost put his arm around the other guy decided who they'd work to get things done in Indianapolis. And he said, we're on different sides of the aisle that we can work through that. Whereas yeah. today, I think they were, excuse me, I think they were blaming the media and social media for the divisiveness. So I'm, I'm not sure how you overcome that as you go to the future, but that's something that the younger generation is definitely going to have to figure out. Yeah. It's an unsolved opportunity. Yeah, exactly. That part of that, I was going to show you all this, uh, 
um, this meme that I I found interesting. It was from uh, Elon Musk. Have you shared that? I haven't yet. Okay. I was going to try to figure out how I can blow this thing up a little bigger for everybody. So I'm um, I'm on the uh, remedial program on this this technology stuff. Uh, and... That all the way bottom right. Here? Nope. Out of there. Or you could do that. Yeah. Do that right there. That'll do it. There you go. Nice. Um, get stuff out of the way here. All right, friends. Here's I've seen this over and over from Elon Musk and. And this was uh, uh, a picture of that. This doesn't say it's Musk, but he used himself yeah, here. He, seen it on Twitter or on X. Yeah, yeah. And it's saying this is where the culture is with people, the Republicans, Democrats, and overall. And, and um, I saw it even a little different than this, where Musk would have been left of center. And then um, when they, when the, uh, evolution of what's gone on in the last four or five years has happened that made uh, Musk uh, to the right of center and almost an extremist. And and really his ideology hasn't changed through that whole time. And so I think that's really, I think that concept is really an important thing for people to think through. Because my, for example, <clears throat> I don't know if you were to pick um, John F. Kennedy and his belief systems, and then put him on that that scale as what, what political party would John F. Kennedy be today? I don't think there would, I think all the political parties would be too conservative for him or too, uh, too no, liberal for him. I don't think him. he'd make it. Yeah. I, yeah. And so, so the, the, the shifting of belief systems is more like a boat on the water. It hasn't stayed constant. Say, say you have a, boat that's called Democrats and a boat that's called Republicans. And they both kind of shifted over the years to the left. And the, the average voter, I don't think, has really paid attention to where their boat has shifted to and hasn't really shifted their uh, allegiance in any way. And it's it's not, I'm not making any condemnation or anything. I'm just saying that's kind of what happened. My One of my relatives was a, um, just a kind of grit as knuckles um, Democrat for most of his life and by the time he passed away he was the opposite of that and so that that's just part of life and how people's belief systems shift and, and they ebb and flow over time. So I was doing some math and in, in your first presidential election uh, uh, that would have been uh, 1980 is that right? The uh, Re Reagan what did that been i think that sounds right yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then my mine was uh i believe uh clinton uh, won and just just looking in the past i like to think well do these things even matter and uh they do <laughs> they, they matter big time one of our friends puts out a great piece uh, brian westbury and he was talking about how the title was elections matter and he was talking about the effects of the 1970s races and and their consequences for social security and just the rising cola and then the rising expectations for those who haven't taken social security and how long can we go on affording this? Uh, these decisions were um, maybe a little easier uh, in the seventies to make, but now we're paying for them today. And so they, they do matter. Yeah, we have a chart in the kitchen at Gimbal Financial that shows history from probably 1900 to 2011 and a variety of different measures. And I was meeting with some friends a while ago and trying to explain tax brackets and how they work. And when you have a marginal tax system, it means there's just different stair steps based on your income level of what percentage you're paying. Historically, the, the fewer number of stair steps you have in a marginal um, system, the lower your taxes have been. And the way that um, elected officials raise taxes, they just add steps in there. So you end up with 20 steps maybe instead of five. I think we have six or seven now, not a lot right now. But what President Roosevelt did is he, he really was trying to move us towards socialism. Like Franklin. Franklin Roosevelt. Yeah, he was he tried to take over the Supreme Court. He did a lot of things with that. He brought in so, lots of socialized issues yeah. and he raised the top marginal bracket to 91%. And if you can imagine, suppose you were having success in the United States and you went out 
and earned a dollar and 91 cents is going to the federal government once you earned it and you get you get nine cents but you probably had some state actually had to pay out of that as well I, i'm pretty sure it's during that time that gold was illegal to own as well as right, right around i think that. he took away i think he made it illegal yeah. yeah yeah can you believe that yeah yeah and so so that that was the kind of the the, the thought process of the time and it's just it's just a interesting thing to consider your vote like like I, I don't know that I can get too passionate. I was making my comments known to somebody yesterday, even about a lo local official, and I just thought that they had made some decisions that didn't really represent the people well at a at a at a city level job. And it's just hard to know how other people think. Like I made that comment in the morning, and I was in this meeting yesterday afternoon, and people were praising the same person in that <laughs> meeting. So I was like, I don't know. What do we know about them? But it. It's an interesting thing. I, I like that this uh, graph where you're going next. You want me to share a couple yeah, of these? Yeah, guys? it's good. Yeah, this is again from our friends where Brian Westbury is from in uh, First Trust. And they did they did all the disclaimers down there. And I can't guarantee the data because I'm trusting them and, and their efforts to do this. And there's no guarantees associated with it. Th this is projecting a buy and hold attitude, which we don't necessarily do that. Where we're going to pull the... Um, the parachute out of things get squirrely out here. But it, the orange and the blue, I believe this color is, is showing, depending on what your political bias is, if you only stay invested <laughs> based on your political bias, um, what that's going to look like. And and it, it, it's going to give you a small percentage of the total possibilities. And it's hard to know what this would look like uh, if they had shortened this to 1984 to now, because yeah. that that clearly, um, I think there was less bias over here, so right. that, that the people probably wouldn't have been as biased to sell out in their investments. So it it gets really volatile over here, so it's hard to know. But it's just trying to present the idea that probably your election uh, opinions aren't going to correlate necessarily with the results you see in the market. Yeah, and and what I see in this uh, chart, Keith, is I I just see capitalism at work, and we do we'll take we'll take phone calls and feedback from probably October to March, April next year, and it'll be something like this. Well, I don't like so and so, and so do you think I should get out of the market, uh, or do you think you know this or that about so and so in the market, or maybe. It's time to get back in because I like so and so in the market. But what I really like about that chart that you just shared is that capitalism works pretty well. And and you make you made that comment about the eighties. I wonder too. Just I mean, you take the technology innovation of the seventies and the eighties, and it's changed the world. It's changed the world for investors as well. And so it's just exciting to me that really. Money doesn't care. Money's going to go towards the places where it's treated the best. And um, that's the most interesting thing about the stock market to me is, is it can defy even, you know, our feelings about who's running the country or not running the country. Absolutely. And this next one I put up here, Doug, is just showing the average going all the way back to the 30s. First year rate of return in the market, second year return, third year in fourth year, which we're in the fourth year right now of a presidential election. And then the, the you know, the color is showing you the Republican or Democrat that's in the office and what happened year by year in the election. And then that, that process, it just shows you that it's, you're going to have up and down years, no matter who's in the office. And consequently, um, some years it's going to be better than others. And, and you're probably not going to be able to guess what's going to be the catalyst because over the top of this, when you, when you think of the overlay of what's going on with the political system, my guess is, is that most of the progress we've had in the United States was not driven by politicians. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you were mentioning stuff that happened here in Gimbal. I haven't had, a, I haven't had a single politician come in and go, how, how can I help your business here, Keith? Right. And, and there's been many of sleepless nights with Gimbal. There's been many of, concerned with our, our well-being of our employer, employees. And and those aren't things politicians come in here and talk to us about. They may go into 
Ford Motor or General Motors and do that, but like to the small business people out there, that most of those people are just looking straight ahead and trying to do the best they can, and they're the ones creating the change and the opportunity in our culture. Yeah. So, so what governs? You know, Keith. Ha Keith sometimes does the morning announcements that are at the church we go to, and I'll never forget it. He says, "Hey, these people don't govern you." And, and what he's saying is, look, you have something inside of you that stirs your soul, stirs your cr creativity, your curiosity to go out and do big things. And it's easy to get sidetracked right now, all the way through this time next year about the news. There's such there's enormous amounts of money being made on our hype and fears. But what's inside you, that's that creativity for the, the small business person that, you know, or or just the independent thinker um, where you can just pour on the gas and keep going during this time. And that's what I intend to do. I, I intend to look at the stock charts, see where the market's going, looking for opportunities, looking for, hey, what what's the opposite side of this trade and being prepared for it. And, and I'm just as excited as ever, but it has nothing to do with the election. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, that everything's cyclical anyway. Like, I, I just think that, whatever you don't like if you just wait a little bit longer it'll come back whatever <laughs> it was like it like I'm, I'm hopeful i keep my fingers crossed that um leisure suits do not come back but then maybe they will maybe someday track suits maybe Ooh, track suits. <laughs> well it's always it's always in style to use a good financial advisor to keep an optimistic attitude and to look to the future with a smile i think yeah yeah. Well, we hope this is helpful for you guys as you think about the election and just know you can pick up the phone and call us anytime. Have a great weekend.